Howdy, welcome to the Photoshop channel. My name is Chris Bartoldis and I'm a designer in Adobe Brand Studio. Yesterday I took over the Photoshop Instagram channel and the followers told me what they want to see on a design poster. Vote on our design choices and we'll share the final poster with you on Friday. See you then. I wanted to make a typography poster because type is a part of everything that I do in art and design. It can be used in so many different ways and the way that I love to use it is by distorting type and really using it as a way to just generate shape and form and composition. I knew that I wanted to use scale variable but the rest was up to you. So I asked y'all what height, weight, and color scheme you want to see. So come at it with me. The theme for my poster is gonna be repetition, and I'm gonna use the word repeat over and over and over again until I get tired of it. <laughs> I chose scale variable because, first of all, it's a variable typeface, and you can do things like change the width, the height, and the best part about scale variable is it's also pretty grotesque, and the strokes are extremely tapered when you get in and out of the forms of the glyphs. The taper on the lowercase d, for example, is really, really tight. I asked you all what kind of height you want to see in the font, and it was between either a tall or wide typeface, and you all chose a tall typeface, which I love wide a little bit more, but I'm gonna give you what you want, because you asked for it. And I asked you all the weight of the typeface, and it was between thin or thick, and you all chose thick, which I totally agree with, and I'm happy you picked. I gave you the slider option on Instagram, and you all put it at 75%, which I think is about maybe 700. So I'm gonna type out the word repeat. The first thing I'm gonna do with it is start playing with the form. And I like to start in black and white, usually before I added like a color layer. It's easy to kind of design with, it's easy to start with. So I'm gonna take my type and convert it to a smart object. And it's important to have grid lines too when you're making posters. It helps organize everything. I'm gonna start transforming it and distorting it. My design process, I'd like to just get stuff down on the page and see what I can get with it. And kind of start dragging these handles, seeing what I can get. You get these really nice angles and perspective. So now we're getting some really cool movement all kind of coming towards the center of the poster. Getting the perspective right on this poster is really important because when you're designing in three-dimensional space, you have to get the perspective always right on the head every time. And it's always good to have the grid system to go off of. In this case, when I'm making the top ground and the foreground and the walls, they all come to a point in space. And so I'm trying to make them all come and meet at that point. I'm going to add a blur effect to when you get closer to the middle. I'm gonna go up to filter, go to pixelate and mosaic. And it's gonna turn the whole thing mosaic. I don't really want that. Going over here to the mask under the smart filter, I'm gonna paint around so it makes this kind of gradient effect as you go towards the center. And the blur effect is gonna add some really nice artifacting on it so that when we add color on top of it, it's gonna have a lot of variation. It really will draw your eye towards the middle. I think I am ready to move on to color. Is it either black and white or colorful? And you all chose colorful. And to be honest, I love black and white, but I will go with colorful. But I don't actually know what color I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna choose from the gradients panel in Photoshop. And so gradient maps take the form of whatever you're gonna put on it and map a gradient to it. So to get a nice color variation, again, I'm gonna choose from a lot of the different options that Photoshop already offers for gradients. So like this one uses like a lot of pinks and orange and indigo. You can see that the gradient in the middle is being applied to the mosaic and it's creating this kind of weird shifting effect. And that's because there's multiple different stops along the gradient. So you get one that's like purple, one that's pink, orange. When you're in the gradient, if you wanna add a stop, like add another color to the gradient, you just click under the gradient strip that you see here and it creates a stop along the gradient. You can use sliders, but you can also type in values. So I like how saturated the blue is, but I want it to be like way more bright. So I'm gonna do 100%. And that's the same thing as dragging up and down the slider. If you were doing left to right, that's saturation. This is the part where you start to question everything. And it's like, is this really good or not? I like it, but 
I think purple's gonna work quite well. It's creating this like tunnel effect that we're looking for. I'm gonna keep it super high brightness, saturation, I'm just gonna turn it down just a little. After I've added the vignette around the sides, I've realized that I don't wanna do the noise and the pixelation in the middle. When you see it from afar, it really brings you in and I want people to feel an end point with the type as it goes in. And a pixelation may not do that. It may not achieve what I want it to do, so I'm gonna remove it. Here is my final poster. I love how it turned out. Thank you so much for joining us today. Follow us on Instagram for the next Edit With Me video. See you all.